We're making it there slowly but surely. Um, I do want to mention before I forget that uh, I would like you all, I mean, I mean do, do your best, obviously, but I would like you all to have your major and your minor key signatures, if you can, memorized by Friday. Friday, I'm planning to give you a half sheet of kids in class. And so it would be to your best benefit if you can have your major key signatures and your minor key signatures memorized as best you can by Friday. Okay? Um, <clears throat> while I'm on the topic, I did. Uh, I did Google uh, signatures flashcards, and this is just one of the many results that pops up. Um, so for instance, here it says major key two sharps. All you have to do is click card to see what the answer is. What is the answer, by the way? D major. Yeah. So I think you just click that, yeah, and it'll show you. I mean, you can make flashcards on your own if you like to. Against that. And I believe, I'd have to double check, but I believe, I believe Micah has hours too on Thursday. If you can make any of those hours on Thursday. He has on Friday. Yeah, he actually has an hour right before this class on Friday, just 10 o'clock on the two. Um, so I guess you can go to other ones. For instance, there's another one, major key, three sharps, and we know that that's A major. I don't know if this goes in order. Yeah, I must. <laughs> well, that's not the most helpful. But uh, anyways, uh, one other thing you can uh, find on this site is, I know this is very crude compared to your standards of video games, <laughs> but uh, there is something called gravity, um, and it's supposed to protect the planets from incoming asteroids. They come down from the top. And if they get too low and hit the earth, you know, then you're in, you're in the hot water, so to speak. But um, the way to get rid of the asteroids is to type in the name of the key. The asteroid will tell you how many sharps or flats and if it's a major or minor key. And then you have to type in the key. So that's one way to uh, check yourself. Uh, you can also check the speed. The only problem is that, uh, for instance, like if I choose the hard level, uh, the only problem is that you have to actually type in the words, like for instance, if the answer is F sharp major, you have to type in F and the word sharp and then the word major. You have to do all that while the asteroid is coming down. So that's, you know, I wish there was a quicker way to do that. But for instance, let's see here. Major key to flats. So you have to see and then if you make a mistake. D flat major, three sharps, major key, one sharp. You know, you, you get the idea. But, so you have to almost know pretty readily. Because, yeah, otherwise these things are going to come down and they're going to, well, whatever planet, that actually looks like Mars to me, not the Earth. But when they get too low, then I think it eventually just stop and I don't know what it does. Correct answer, A flat. But anyways, that, that one, that's one thing, I mean, if you care for that, it can help you work on your speed. But more than speed, I'd really rather you just make sure you know them. You're pretty certain about all uh, 15 major keys and their key signatures, and then all 15 minor keys and their key signatures. Okay. And we'll be dealing with um, minor scales and key signatures today, and you'll have one more assignment for Friday that'll still deal with minor key signatures. So. There's still time. It's not. It's not too late. So to speak. There's still time. All right. Uh, so we don't need to deal with that anymore. Put that down. <laughs> now, um, I have nothing to return to you today because I told you last class I was going to collect workbook pages five and six today, and I'm still planning to do that. Uh, if you have a workbook, it's basically front side and back side. The only thing you don't have to have done is section D on page five. Um, so I'm not returning anything today, but I would like to give you all an opportunity for some time to ask questions. If you have questions about anything on page five, section A, 
or anything at all on page six, because I think you have to do all of page, page six, unless you're, is your, is your on page six. So yeah, if you have questions about a particular key, how to write a particular key signature, how to find a particular key or key signature, that kind of thing, um, now would be a perfect time to uh, ask that. Also, I don't know if I was uh, ultra clear last time, but on section A on page 5, did you fill in finally the A sharp minor and the D sharp minor? I, I thought I needed to mention that. I don't know if I was really clear about that last time. Now come to the silent pause. Well, eventually, some of you are going to be brave enough, or some of you are going to have questions. And that's, that's fine. It's fine if you don't, it's fine if you do. Yes? On exercise D, the mm -hmm. D sharp minor. The D sharp minor? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's actually, it's just because that one is asking for it in the bass clef, it looks like. And D sharp minor has six sharps in its key signature. It is the relative minor, we say, so it's the uh, F sharp major, because both those keys have six sharps. So what I would do is, and no, you don't have to stand on a podium to write key signatures correctly. I don't know who put this here, but it is here. So the first sharp is F sharp, and in bass clef, it always goes on that line, the fourth staff line from the bottom. So F sharp, then the second one is C sharp, then G sharp, then D sharp, then A sharp, then uh, E sharp, which would be right here. Sometimes I get too close to the board. I think you can stop right there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Remember, the order of the sharps in the flats do not change between major and minor keys, nor does the placement. It's always the same in bass clef, and it's always the same what we learned for treble clef with lots of sharps. Any other questions? Then what I'll do is I'll come around and pick these up. Um, make sure, again, your name is on them, even though your sheet probably gives you a place to that mic So let's Today is the, if you pay attention or look once in a while at your assignment sheet, today is the last day I'd like to spend officially on scales and key signatures. Um, on Friday, after we take the quiz somewhere early in the class, on Friday I'd like to start talking to you all about rhythm and meter, which is, um, it, it's, another, uh, it's another topic completely, but yet it's still super necessary as, a, as fundamentals. Just like all we've been talking about so far in this class has been basic fundamentals. Okay, so um, first of all, I'd like to um, talk to you about minor scales, maybe another way perhaps to view minor scales. We know so far that um, our best strategy, at least my, my way of explaining the best way to write minor scales right now is to start by writing a natural minor scale. And you can always get the notes correct on a natural minor scale directly from the minor key's key signature, because they match exactly. The key signature conforms only to, and it represents only the notes exactly of the natural minor scale. Now, once we have a natural minor scale, then all you have to do is make uh, a few adjustments 
specifically to scale degree 6 and or scale degree 7 to get the harmonic minor and to get the melodic minor quality. Um, so, for instance, if I were to say um, I have a natural minor scale and it's spelled correctly, what do I have to do to turn a natural minor scale into a harmonic minor scale? What do I need to adjust? Raise the seventh scale degree of your natural minor a half step, and it'll become harmonic minor. That's all you got to do. And if I ask you, how do I go from a natural minor scale to a melodic minor scale, what would you tell me I need to adjust? Raise the sixth and seventh. Raise the sixth and seventh scale degrees a half step. That's right. Now here's a pen. Well, no, I don't even think I want to go there. All right. What I have on the board here is for perhaps another approach. Um, let's look at the minor scales from a different vantage point. There really are indeed, as I said before, three different versions or three different forms of the minor scale. We have the natural minor, we have the harmonic minor, and we have the melodic minor. That is true, and it never will change, basically. What I have on the board, however, is I have a C, kind of like a C minor scale, but what I've done is I've actually put in this scale both versions of scale degree 6. See how there's two A's in this scale? And I put in both versions of scale degree 7. There are two, two B's, uh, types of B's in this scale. Scale degree 6, I have what I call a lowered version, and I have the raised version. Other ways I've mentioned that before is that you have the minor six scale degree and then there's the major six scale degree. And for scale degree seven, I also have a lowered version and I have a raised version. The minor seventh scale degree and the major seventh scale degree. So basically one way that you could perhaps look at the, at the minor scale is again, remember, that the first five notes of any form of the minor scale are identical. The only difference among those three types or versions of the minor scale are found in degrees six and seven. Okay? And you, only, you always have two choices for each. There's two scale degree sixes to pick from and two scale degree sevens. In fact, if I start from here and go to here, these are all the keys on the piano, black and white, between G and C. There are no other keys in between. These are all of them. Now, I, uh, I don't have enough colored markers, and I'll see, what, I'll see what I can do with some of these colors over here. I want you to help me uh, determine, if I wanted to make this scale a natural minor scale, um, let's see, does this, does this color work? Yeah. Well, not very well, but we'll try. Um, which version would I use of scale degree 6 and scale degree 7 to get a natural minor scale? Use the lower versions of both. That's right. So for natural minor, I would use this. So you can't see that, can you? Let me try another color. Maybe this is a little bit better. Natural minor scale would use these two. So you have C, D, E flat, F, G for natural minor scale, and then you choose A flat, B flat, and C. That would be the right way to do the natural minor. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, I'll use blue for the next one. If I wanted to spell a uh, harmonic minor scale on C, which versions of 6 and 7 would I use to get harmonic minor? Uh, the 6 flat and the 7 natural? Yeah, the lowered 6 and the raised 7, or the minor 6 and the raised 7. So for instance, well, let me, let me actually write it up. Let me write it up here quickly. That way I won't, I won't infringe upon my stuff that I have for the natural minor. So we got A flat, natural, B flat, B natural, and C. Yeah. And so for the harmonic minor, what I would end up using for six and seven is I would use this one, but I would use this one. And what we find is that the only, the only scale that has this much of a space between two scale degrees in the harmonic minor, does anyone know how big of a gap that is from 
A flat to B natural? But more than a half step. Right? Because A flat to A natural would be a half step. And A flat to B flat would be a whole step. So what is A flat to B natural? It's a whole and a half. Yeah, it's a step and a half. We call it a step and a half. And the harmonic minor scale is the only one that has an interval or distance between two connect or two adjacent scale degrees of a step and a half. I guess I could put 1.5 steps. The, the natural minor just has half steps and whole steps. Same thing with the melodic minor, ascending and descending. But the harmonic form of the minor scale has a step and a half. And that's one, that's one of the things that helps it kind of stay singled out in my mind. Now, what I'd like to do is I would like to take out the extra or superfluous notes that are not needed in these scales, and I'd like to finally look at these three forms of the minor scales to find where the half steps are. Okay. It's going to be important to know where the half steps are in minor scales to distinguish among them, because if I just give you a scale with a bunch of accidentals, could you tell me whether or not it's a major scale or a minor scale? And if it's a minor scale, could you tell me which form of minor scale it is? This is something I want you to be able to spot and identify on our first test. Our first test. So, again, let me take this out of here. And let me take these out of here. And then let me take this out of here and this out of here. All right. Let's find out where the half steps are. First of all, remember how the first five notes are identical in all three forms of the minor scale? I called that, one of the first days we talked about minor scales, I called that those five notes a minor pentachord. A minor pentachord. And guess what? In the first five notes of a minor scale, there is one half step, and that half step occurs between scale degrees two and three. Who can remember 
way back when, between which two scale degrees do we encounter the first half step in a major scale? Three and four. Three and four. Okay. So you see there's already a big difference now between any major scale and any minor scale. Any major scale is going to have a half step between three and four. And if you see a half step between three and four, and you don't know what the scale is, at least you can reduce the choices down to major, right? Anytime you find a scale is a half step between scale degrees three and four, it's automatically major. Automatically. And guess what? Then you're done. Because there aren't any other versions of major scales. There's only one kind of major scale. But if you find in a scale that you're not sure what it is, if you look and you find a half step between scale degrees two and three, then you know it's immediately some form of minor scale. It has to be. It's either natural harmonic or melodic minor. Because there's a half step between scale degrees 2 and 3 rather than 3 and 4. Make sense? Okay, so that helps you at least wheel down some silly answers. Now, in the natural minor scale, which is this one up here, or I should probably label it, let's find out. I think there's only one other half step between two pitches. Can anyone see where it is in the top staff? The G and the A flat. The G and the A flat, that's right. So the other half step in a natural minor scale is between scale degree 5 and lowered scale degree 6. And there are no other half steps in the natural minor scale. And I don't necessarily need to memorize this, but just let's point these out so you kind of know there's, there's a slight difference among these three forms of the minor scale. I don't, I don't really mind where the whole steps are. We, I don't even need to go there. All right. Now, the harmonic minor scale. We know, of course, one of the half steps is between scale degrees 2 and 3. Because all minor scales have a half step between 2 and 3. OK. Um, where is another half step in the harmonic minor scale? Between 6 and 7. No, that's not a half step between six and seven. That's actually a step and a half. That's that huge gap. It's between five and six. Yeah, it's still between five and six, like the natural minor. But there's, but there's even there's even a third half step in the harmonic minor scale. Seven and eight. Yeah, between seven and eight. So the harmonic minor scale has three half steps in it. Obviously, the one between scale degrees 2 and 3. Between 5 and 6, like the natural, are much minor. But this one has a half step between 7 and 8. How do you, think, like, say, how do you like, signify that a 1 and a half? Um, I don't think I'll ever ask you to. But if you just want to write 1.5 or one, you know, a fraction like 1 and a half, that's fine. Okay, and then finally the ascending melodic minor. We know there's a half step between scale degrees two and three. Where is another, or is there another half step in the ascending melodic minor? Well, well there's one between seven and eight. Okay. And that's it for the ascending melodic minor. There's just a half step between two and three and between seven and eight. Yes, sir. So, like, if you were asking on the test mm -hmm. for us to identify what scale it is, couldn't we tell just because it goes up and down? Or uh, yes, but on a test, I would probably only give you like the ascending half. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. And so you'd have to tell distinguish that that it's melodic minor versus natural harmonic. Mm -hmm. That makes more sense. Yep. Okay. Um, other things that we can tell from these scales. Um, this this makes sense because we already found the half step. Well, actually, hold on a second. Maybe we, I don't know if you do this if it's redundant. Do you know that the, the lower six of the minor six scale degree is only the half step above five? And that the raised six scale degree or major six scale degree would be a whole step above five? I like to compare where those would be 
in relation to a fixed scale degree like that one. And let's compare how far away these two versions of 7 are to scale degree 8. The lowered scale degree 7 or minor 7 scale degree is always a whole step below 8. And the raised, here it is, the raised 7 scale degree is always a, just a half step below scale degree 8. These are some other things we can observe about the minor scales. All right. Now, is it okay if I erase this to make room for a sample or an example? All the other years I've taught here, I taught in room 20, which is across the hall there. And there is a smart board in room 20. And in order to erase a board, the smart board in room 20, all I have to do is do like a circle like this, and then it goes away. It's really nice. <laughs> Not so here. OK. I'm going to put up a scale on the board. And well, let's see here. Which cloth could I use? confronted with something like this mess on a test, and I ask you to identify the scale type. Is it major? Is it natural minor, harmonic minor, or melodic minor? What's one of the first things you could, where would you go to look to at least rule out some possibility? So you go to scale degree one and two and do the double or half step, or okay. no, scale degree uh, two and three. Yeah, the right, because scale degrees one and two, there's always a whole step in all types of scale. Between those two. But where is the first half step? Is the first half step between two and three or three and four? Yeah, it's between two and three. It's right here. You see D sharp to E natural, that's a half step. So immediately I can rule out that this is not what kind of scale? Right, it's not major. It's not C sharp major. It's got to be one of the three C sharp minor scales, either natural, harmonic, or melodic. Now, one possible way you can decide among which of these three it is, is you could think of C-sharp minor's key signature. What, does anyone know what C-sharp minor's key signature? It's four sharps. Four sharps, right? How many sharps do we have? And don't, don't count this one on the end. We have one, two, three, four, five. Does that mean, could it be C-sharp natural minor? No, because C-sharp natural minor would use four sharps exactly, just like the key signature. So it looks like it's either harmonic or melodic. Well, let's look for some more half steps. Can anyone find another half step between two adjacent pitches? Yep. Between five and six. OK. I see one between five and six. G sharp to A is a half step. But you know those are the half steps for natural minor. And we already said it's not natural minor. So there's got to be something else that gives it away. Do you see another half step? Between uh, 6 and 7? 6 and what? 7. No. That's not a half step, but what is this? This huge gap here. Uh, it's a step and a half, right? And isn't this also a half step right here between 7 and 8, B sharp to C sharp? So now with all that information, which one of these do you think it is? Harmonic. Anyone? Yeah. It's harmonic minor. Yes, sir. Or yes, ma'am. Sorry. No, okay. Uh, I was writing. Can you explain one more time why we automatically said it wasn't a natural minor scale? Okay. Um, it's not a natural minor scale because I know C sharp minor has four sharps. And natural minor would use those sharps exactly. But I count one, two, three, four, I count five sharps. Okay. So that rules out natural minor. That's right. And I can confirm my answer by looking at where the half steps are. And the fact that I can see this huge gap between six and seven 
That's that's a dead ringer for for modern mm -hmm. Yep. Any questions? Yeah. Cool. Is there another way to think about this if you don't want to do the whole whole concept thing? That's not a really complicated idea. Um. Well, I think no matter what, if you're just given a scale and you don't know what it is, I think you have to look for where the half step is at the beginning of the scale. You have to find whether there's a half step between 2 and 3 or between 3 and 4. Just to know whether you're looking at a major or a minor scale. I don't really know that there's any other way around that. Okay. Remember, if there's a half step between 2 and 3, it makes it minor automatically. If there's a half step between 3 and 4, it's major automatically. The only other thing I can think of about when you know it's minor and you're trying to decide which form of the minor it is, the only thing I can uh, uh, steer you towards is you can look at the number of accidentals and see if it matches with that minor key's key signature. But see, you have to know that minor key's key signature. If the number of accidentals doesn't match exactly, then it's harmonic or melodic. And then what I what I would do is I'd have to go to scale degrees six and seven right there to find out what kind of uh, interval I have or space between six and seven. If I just have a regular whole step, then it's ascending melodic minor. But if I have a step and a half, then it's harmonic minor. And I don't really know. I mean, unless you guys can think of one, I don't really know another way to figure that out or compute that until you get familiar enough with all these scales that you can just start looking at them and say, oh, I know what that scale is. I've played that or I've sung that. On, I've played it on my instrument or on the piano a billion times. You know? After a while, you, you've seen these enough that you can just look at it and say, oh, that's C sharp minor, and I see because this is a half step, that's not mine. <laughs> and there's a big gap here. <laughs> Good. Other. I don't know if that's a great answer, but are there other questions? <laughs> yeah? For most of these, um, for like the coming quiz, is it going to be always in the eight-step order if you have to choose it, so it should know the first note of it, or is it going to be? Uh, you mean like from? It's like we should know which C-sharp because it's a C-sharp. You just have to figure out if it's that major or natural. Right. The first note, I if I give you a scale, the first note I give you will always be the name of the key or the scale. That will always be correct. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. yeah. The first and last notes should always be correct. And I don't know that I'm necessarily going to ask you on the quiz on Friday about this. This is going to definitely be on the test. But on the quiz on Friday, could you, if I asked you to spell a C-sharp harmonic minor scale, could you spell it correctly? Use the key signature, and then raise scale to get natural minor, and then raise scale to be 7 to make it harmonic. Did you have a question? No, 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 I think it's that. Oh, okay. Uh, I suppose I could have moved on. Okay. Um, next thing I need to do is I need to explain to you, because I, I didn't really do that except for the circle of this, I didn't really explain to you how can you find the relative key a given key. For instance, um, you remember, I'll just draw a little bit of a circle up here. Not going to be the greatest circle. Um, B flat. G, B, G, E, A, G, G. Okay. You remember uh, last class I said that any major and minor key that are right next to each other on the circle of fifths are said to be relative keys. And the definition of a relative key, relative keys are two keys that share the same key signature. Two keys that share the same key signature. For instance, boy, that's a sad looking G. Kind of looks like a nine or something. Anyways, for instance, C major and A minor are relative keys because they both have no flats, no sharps in their key signature. And D major and D minor are considered to be relative keys because they both have two sharps in their key signature. But let's say you were given, let's say you were given B flat major and you couldn't look at a circle of fifths. And I needed to know what is the relative minor key of B flat major. You didn't know it was G. Well, 
one way you can do it is if you start with a major scale to find the relative minor key, all you do is you go down three half steps. And that will get you the note that starts the minor key. So let's test that out. Let's take another one. Let's take G major. Let's say you didn't know what the relative minor of G major was. What is three half steps below G? Think of the keyboard again. G, F sharp is one, F natural is another, E is a third, right? Does that not give you E? And that will tell you E minor. Uh, let's try another one that I don't have on here. Let's try E flat major. What is the relative minor to E flat major? Think of E flat on the keyboard and go down three half steps. What note do you get to? C. C. So the relative minor of E flat major is C minor. And you know that E flat major and C minor share the same key signature, which is what? Three flats. Three flats. G flat, E flat, A flat. Oh, yes, we've got some studying to do between now and Friday, right? Okay, let's say you're given a minor key and you need to find the relative, the other, the other one, the relative major with the same key signature. If you're starting with a minor key, all you need to do is you need to go up three half steps and that will tell you what the relative major key is. So let's say, we'll start with one on here, let's start with A minor. A minor and I'm asking what is the relative major to A minor. Well, think of A on the keyboard and go up three half steps, B flat, B, C, and you get C, right? So the relative major of A minor is C major. Can we try one that's not on the board here? Um, let's try, ooh, here's a good one. Uh, what is the relative major key of F sharp minor? A major, that's right. And do you know what their, both of their key signatures are? Um, there's three sharp. That's right, three sharp. See, these, unfortunately, I don't make this up, but these are kind of the things we need to know. These are the things I want you to focus on, especially by for the end of the week. You know, get this stuff in green. Because then, when you go to your lessons, whether it's singing or whether it's instrumental lessons, and your instructor says something about, you know, G sharp or minor, minor scale, you're like, oh yeah, no sweat, I can play that. You know, whatever it is. Now you don't have to, you guys don't have to play your minor scales yet. You're just doing major scales, I think. But eventually you'll get you'll get to a year where you have to play the minor scales, right? You have to do that? And I don't know, but when you get to your 300 level juries, can they ask you like any any minor scale? Can they say, you know, play, they would never do this, I hope, but would they ever say, like, play D sharp natural minor? Ooh. But you say, I don't know, sweat. <laughs> I understand how those work. I, am, I know what I'm doing. I just can't tell you the fingering to play for those because I, I don't play your instrument. So it's kind of practical in that sense, right? It's practical stuff. Uh, any questions about how to find the relative key of a given key? You can either use your picture of, you know, your uh, in your mind picture photograph of the circle of fists, or you can use this information too. That will get you the same answer. Okay, we're getting there. Good, we have some time left. Um, what I wanted to do to get you to start thinking about the key signatures is I would like you, uh, I'm, I'm going to give you a handout. Now this is not for a grade or anything, it's just for practice. And the top half of this handout has, oh, it's got a slew of probably over 30 key signatures. And I want to see if you can identify the major keys for these key signatures on the top half of the sheet as quickly as possible. 
So I'm going to give it, it's not for a grade, no, no stress, right, no pressure. I'm going to give this CT face down, and then when I say go, you can turn it over, and we're just going to do the top, the top half. You don't have to complete the whole. Yeah. Those are good times, aren't they? Yeah, when you're done with the top half, you can uh, take a break or put your pencil down, whatever. Just sit tight for another minute or so. Not 
finished with the top half, that's okay. Um, let's take a look at the answers. Uh, first of all, I wanted to ask you, the third line down from the top, what cleft is that? Tenor cleft, right? What's going on with some of those key signatures? It looks like they're all out of whack. Well, believe it or not, for the tenor cleft, the placement of the sharps is different than it is for uh, treble and bass and stuff. But we don't need to go down that road, okay? We don't need to worry about that for tenor cleft. All you got to do to find the key signature or the, the key, just count the number of sharps, right? If you see five sharps, it doesn't matter what arrangement they look like, that means it's B major. And if you see three sharps that look kind of arranged in a funky manner, it doesn't matter, that's still A major. Right? Three sharps is always A major. Okay, uh, let me change this here and see if I can put the, um, the answers to the top half on the screen. Yeah, like, like for the major keys? Yeah. Yeah, but I think we said, I don't know if you use this, like the first one, it's the second to last flat. That's, that that's how I learned. Okay. So. Yeah, and the, um, what, is it, what is it for the major keys? It's just, you go to the last accidental and go up a half step. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So those should be your answers. You can check them. <clears throat> still need to look at those, that's fine. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass out the handout that's for Friday. This is on minor scales and key signatures just to give you a little more practice and review before the quiz Friday. Um, also, I want you to, if you'll have time, take that sheet with you and do the bottom half. You can practice the minor key signatures. Okay? Now that, that's again, excellent preparation for the quiz on Friday. So, you take this. And while I'm passing that out, I'm going to let Kiana speak because Kiana's got some insight into test review. Um, oh, do you need me to switch something for you? No, it's okay. This is probably going to be very confusing for y'all. That's okay. I took a class last year, so I'm going to share some knowledge with you all that I still use and it's very helpful. Um, So that's the order of the charts uh, on the triple fifths. It's the same order, except it's a little off-sided. And I just remember the saying, fat cats go down alleys age butter. It's the same thing with the minor ones. It's also off-centered. If you just remember where it starts, you can remember um, that's the order of them. Uh, that's I don't understand the whole math, like three half steps or whatever. So that's how I remember it. And then like when you get down here, um, the new saying, it goes blanket exploded and dad got cold feet. Once you start a new saying is when you start adding the accidental to the circle. It's the same way when you go this way. Um, that's how I remember it. I don't know if that's gonna help any of you, but that's how I remember it and if you're not in a map, that's silly, but... No, that's fine. Whatever works for the way you think. And you know, Micah might have some other ways to think about it. Yeah. yeah. Thank when you. The, when the theory of you comes, go to it. <laughs> it's very helpful. Thank you, Kim. Yeah. Did I get you one of these yet? All right, so you're free to go. We're out of time. We'll see you on Friday.
Yes, there's a hand up, but I don't have it ready yet. Okay. Um, are, you, are you going to be able, will you be here? Will you, well, I mean, I guess, if, if you were to come to my office and remind me, I could print one out for you. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, will you be here on Tuesday after? Monday? Yes. You could always come and get one from me then. Okay. Just one day ahead of time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, just, I don't have it ready yet. Okay. okay. So, are you, I mean, are you okay if you're, you're going to miss this quiz? Um. Well, I guess if you haven't used your makeup, you could turn in your homework instead. Um, and then you wouldn't, if you turn in your completed homework, you wouldn't get a zero. Mm -hmm. So maybe you want to do that. Yeah. But that will be the only time that you can use that for a makeup, if that's okay with you. Yeah. Okay. All right. So maybe let's do that then. Thank you. Mm -hmm.